you're not getting sick of it yet. Uh, this one is a fun little uh, postcard I'm doing with the new Etcher Lab uh, postcards. I I don't know how new they are but they're new to me so uh, I open up the box for you uh, and it's really fun little cards you can do and they have the postcard printed on the back so can't wait to send one of these out and fill it out uh, I'm doing some little uh, kind of retro presents today using my uh, new set that will be coming out here in a couple weeks called retro holiday I'm just painting it with the dot card today uh, but I will have half pan sets so it's eight half pans in there available in my shop very soon so I'm just waiting for those paints to dry uh, but I'm going to show you how you can paint these fun little holiday postcards to send out to family and friends because I know uh, a lot of people are not getting together for the holiday this year so it's more important than ever to stay in touch with the people you love and writing a letter or a little note will really brighten someone's day. And better yet if you hand painted a little piece of artwork for them as well. So this is a pretty simple little painting and I'll show you just a couple little techniques that we can use to make some different designs of layering watercolors over each other and using some funky non-traditional Christmas colors as well. So thanks for joining me today guys and I hope you enjoy painting with me. All right, I am gonna go ahead and start out. I'm gonna open up this package. I just took the little sleeve off the box. I literally have not opened it until now. These are the Etcher Lab postcards. They're supposed to be 100% cotton paper. Oh, that's cute. They have the postcard backing. It's a really nice little storage box too. paper. Those are going to be really cute. All right. Set this off to the side. You might have noticed in some of my last videos I've been using my little jars of water here. Usually I have a big plastic water bucket but we got a new kitten last month and it keeps trying to drink my water so my little solution maybe you can copy is I stuck some cups upside down over top of my water cups because the kitten will not leave my water cups alone and I don't want to have to keep walking back and forth across to the kitchen or not have them easily accessible to me so that's that's been my little solution so that I could leave the water jars on my desk sometimes when I'm going back and forth between stuff so okay so today I wanted to paint some little um like a little retro postcard here. This is a set that I have coming out here. I just um, poured all of them and I was practicing uh, yesterday. I was doing a little uh, color chart with this. I posted this on my Instagram if you follow me there. Uh, and this is called Retro Holiday that I have coming out. It's uh, I just started pouring them a few days ago so it'll be about two weeks before they're available in my Etsy shop but I just want to give you a little sneak peek of this but um, you don't have to use this set. You could use whatever colors you want to do this. Um, we're just going to be doing some little Christmas ornaments on this little postcard here. Or not ornaments. Uh, I guess they look like ornaments. I'm going to do little presents that look like ornaments. So uh, basically I'm going to do uh, six little boxes and then I'm going to do different designs on each one and different colors. So just a fun kind of funky little uh, Christmas postcard here. So I'm going to go ahead and start by just uh, making out my little boxes here and just kind of marking it out. I've got a uh, Faber-Castell graphite aquarelle pencil. Uh, this is a water-soluble graphite pencil and I'm using the hardness HB. I use that one the most uh, just because it is the hardest of the lead, which means it will make the lightest mark. The softer the lead, the darker the mark you get. So that's just a rule of thumb. If you're not familiar with drawing pencils, um, like an 8B would be a very soft graphite and it'll give you a really dark mark. Um, generally, number two pencils is the 2B so that, that's that little uh, art lesson for you today. Okay, and speak of the devil, here is my little naughty kitten trying to come up here right now. Okay. Sorry, my husband's messaging. All right, I was gonna look for something that was a little square to trace around, but let's see what I got. Hey, that will be perfect. I've got a little ink pad here. I'll use that as my little template. I'm just looking for a square object here, so we could make them go, I'm gonna try and make them even. Could make them go at a angle, but I'm just gonna just use that 
for our very light marks to make some boxes. I'm going to sharpen my pencil a little bit. Let's see, I think I might be able to fit five on here nicely. We'll see. I found maybe a smaller square. Okay, well, maybe we'll do three. Okay, we'll do three. I think that looks nice. I kind of just put them in random places at random levels, and I'm just going to do some different designs on those guys. I'm going to be using today Princeton Velvet Touch Round Size 4 brush. And like I said, I've got my retro holiday dot card here. This is a new set that I've got coming up. It's got um, a cherry red. See right here, cherry red, a coral, which is more of an orangey pink, a golden red, which is a deep golden yellow. It's so pretty. Um, I made this with the nickel azo yellow pigment, juniper, julep. Uh, this one's a little bit a lighter green that's a little more transparent. I've got a uh, turquoise here and a peacock blue, more of like a dark turquoise. So, and then I also have this uh, mica pigment, which is that silver glitter snowflake sparkle. So, if you're looking for some kind of eco friendly glitter. This is made from natural mica and not from plastic, so no more microplastics in the... We use enough plastic packaging and stuff as it is, so... All right, I want to do some different designs on here. I'm going to paint one of these just with a straight turquoise. Let me move. I had some paint left over here on my palette. It's a bit messy. Uh, I was making my little chart, so... I'm just going to do a solid turquoise here, get a little more water. Well, this is the first time I've used these little etcher postcards. This seems like some very nice cotton paper. It's got a little bit of a texture to it. You've already gone outside my box, but just trying to even that out. All right, and then I will let that dry and I'll do a, like a little design over it, probably with the peacock blue. That would look really nice over it. Um, let's see, I think I'll do the, the julep. It's like mint julep. And as you can tell, I've already done a bunch of painting with this dot card, and I have a ton of paint still on it, and they were relatively small dots. I mean, sometimes you get those um, dot cards from manufacturers like Daniel Smith, and they give you these teeny little dollops, but I'm, I give you a pretty generous dot down here. So I will have these dot cards available if you just want to try them out and don't want to purchase a whole half pan set, um, but the dot cards are available as well. Um, I will have those listed up in my shop very soon. All right, this one... It all in green. I guess I could have used a bigger brush for doodling in these washes, but I just I really like this. The number four brush is my favorite. All right, and let's see. The next one I think I'll do like a stripe, but I'm going to leave some uh, white area on there. So I am going to do my cherry color here. And this is a single pigment red, actually. I don't have my kids out here. There's the... My daughter was messing up all my little sample cards here. I'm going to have lost a couple of them. Okay, here we go. Here's Cherry. Uh, that's Pigment Red 112. It's a single pigment and so is the turquoise and the goldenrod too which I, now I can't find the little uh, sample cards I made up for those my daughter was moving everything around on me okay uh, I'm so I'm following along with my outline of my bounding box there I'm just going to make some diagonal lines going across here and if you wanted to tape it off with some really thin washi tape or masking tape you could do that too so do a teeny little triangle for the corner there so, just try to follow the same angle going across. And I've already contaminated my brush with uh, some of that silver mica. I just realized there was still some on my palette, so it'll be a sparkly red. 
Uh, and one thing with this is I, I did all these matte colors and then I gave you the one silver sparkle so you can make any of the colors a glitter pigment, a uh, glitter paint, but just by mixing in that silver sparkle. I had the silver mica it was in there when I added the cherry to it. All right, I'm gonna let that dry a little bit more. Let's see, I'm gonna put some cute little bows on the top here and then make them look like they're little ornaments hanging from the tree. Let's see. Um, on this one, I'll just do the same color I'm gonna do my now I'll use that juniper, which is the darker green of this set. I'm just going to do some kind of uh, some little bow. Whoops, that is not dry yet. Okay. I'm just bleeding in there. Isn't it? I'll just kind of blend that in there. I'm going to go ahead and get my dryer really quick and just dry these so that I can move on to the next part. going across here now that that's dry and that darker green my juniper over top of the julep all right and I'm gonna take this peacock blue for to go over top of the turquoise so I'll kind of stick with my stripe theme we'll just do some vertical stripes going down here and if you want to get really really thin little stripes you just got to use the lightest pressure at the tip of your brush all right and we'll give that one a bow loop up here make it look really full give it a little more of that retro look I'm going for all right and I'll add one on top of my red package Right, now to add a couple more little like retro -y elements here I'm gonna take my goldenrod color get some of that and again I've got uh, this mica all over the place here so one thing I will comment um, if you're gonna be using a mixture and you don't want the mica to contaminate your other paints I would get an extra jar of water even beyond your two and have a third one just for rinsing mica out of your brush because even if you go and rinse it out in here there'll still be a little bit floating around in your water or it might be on your palette so I mean if you wanted to use a second plate just for using your mica pigments that might be a good idea too because um, I, I had this on the palette from when I was doing this so you can see even though I started out doing just all the mattes and then I did the mica line last I still had little bit that kind of transferred because of uh, my water that I was using and uh, just having it on the plate in general so something to be aware of when you're using those uh, metallic pigments like that all right so I want to add maybe some little I like to call these lazy daisies little atomic star motifs 
So I'm just making the lines and then painting little dot elements on the sides. I'll just do some different size of little stars and things. So here I'm going to make a little starburst. So I want to make uh, a cross like this, but not even. You want the up and down sections to be a little longer and then turn that into a triangle. And then I'll put some little lines on either side of it like that. I'm going to do another small little lazy daisy here. You can vary up the length on your uh, lines just to give it a little more of a funky feel. Put one over here too. I'm going to get some of this coral. Now with the coral, it's a pretty vibrant color, but if you dilute it down, you'll get a nice pink color. Maybe I'll do one of those little starburst motifs here too. Alright, now I'm going to make these little guys look like little ornaments. I'm going to do the peacock blue, get a little more of that. I'm just going to make some little dashed lines going up like they're hanging from a tree. Maybe I'll do a couple more little lazy daisies and some of the blue just to bring a little more of that in. And I'll do a little six point one. Do some of my turquoise. Now I need to just add a little more sparkle on things so I can just go with that snowflake sparkle here. Really glitterify it up. And just add a little bit to the bows. And this is a transparent glitter too, so it's not going to alter the color of your uh, it doesn't have like a gray tone undertone to it because it's just the glitter mica and it's in a transparent base so you um, are not going to get a gray tint added to your um, to your paint so maybe we'll just do a couple little simple little snowflake shapes around here Might be a little hard to see on the camera, I'm not sure. All right, there's just a fun little, we'll call it my retro presents. How about that? 
Hopefully you can see the sparkle there in the light. But that'll be a really cute little uh, postcard. Maybe I'll send a little snail mail to somebody special. So uh, thanks for joining me, guys. And uh, please do check out my Etsy shop. I've got lots of different paints in there right now. And this retro holiday set will be in there in November 2020. Uh, hopefully here in a couple weeks after I publish this video. And uh, I'm really excited about this. It's got some really pretty colors. And it could be a really great mixing palette as well. I mean, look at these colors that you can create with it. It is gorgeous. I am in love with this cherry color. And the turquoise and peacock blue are to die for as well. So if you know me, you know I love my aqua and my turquoise blue colors. So um, thanks for joining me, guys. And make sure you subscribe because it really helps me out. And I'm really hoping I can get to that 1,000 followers here in the next year or so. So I can monetize my channel and uh, look forward to creating more content for you guys. Thanks.